Good day! Today we will be learning about growth and reproduction in plants. My name is Ray Valencia. Here are the objectives of this lesson. To compare and contrast the processes of sexual and asexual reproduction and to determine the structure of a flower and its purpose. All right, but before we proceed, let's see these words. Let's start with sexual reproduction, asexual reproduction, Fertilization Statements Answer We have pollen Stigma Pollination Petals and sepals. These are the words that we are going to encounter with this lesson. Stay tuned. Plants reproduce in different ways depending on their structures and surroundings they live in. Plants have sex cells, sperm or male cells, and egg or female cells. Sexual reproduction in plants involves male and female organs. Fertilization occurs when a sperm unites an egg cell. The fertilized egg becomes a zygote. Some plants undergo asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction takes place without joining of male or female organs. Asexual reproduction requires only one parent and duplicates offspring that are the same as the parent. Plants undergo Sexual reproduction include algae, moses, liverworts, banana, and sugar cane. Here are the examples of the mentioned plants. Algae, moses, banana tree, sugar cane. This is the structure of a flower. Flowering plants reproduce by making seeds. It contains the male and female parts needed for sexual reproduction. Flowers contain the male and female parts needed for sexual reproduction. The male parts of the flower are the stamens. The filaments hold the anther which produces pollen. All right. The female part of the flower is the cartel or pistil. It is made up of stigma, which is sticky to cut pollen grains. The style all right, this one, a tube leading to the ovary. All right, this is how it looks like inside this ovary, which contains the female cells of a flower. Pollination occurs when 
pollen from anther of one plant is carried to the stigma of anther. Many catching flowers are adapted to pollination by insects such as butterflies and bees. Pollen is carried on insects' bodies. Some flowers are pollinated by wind. When the pollen unites the female egg cell, fertilization has taken place. After this, the petals wither and the seeds grow in the ovary. When the seed grows, the ovary develops into a fruit. The petals and sepals, all right, dry up and fall from the repining fruit. This is the structure of a flower. A new plant inside a seed is called an embryo. Embryo has small leaves. In addition to that, this is receptacles and this is the ovules inside the ovary of a flower. And these three are the part of cartel or pistil or carpel, stigma, style, and ovary. Let's watch this, the structure of a flower. Let's watch this video of the structure of a flower. Till now, we have discussed and learned the different types of asexual reproduction in plants. But is there any other method of reproduction adopted by plants? Yes, there is. We know that some plants are capable of sexual reproduction as well. Do plants possess any special features for this? Yes, they do. Plants possess flowers. Flowers are the reproductive structure of the plant. In a flower, the male sex organ is called the stamen and the female sex organ is called the pistil. But how does this process of sexual reproduction occur? Let's try and understand it. But before that, let's have a look at the typical structure of a flower. It appears somewhat like this. A flower has mainly two components. Now, what do we mean by this? Every flower is mainly composed of two parts. They are the essential and the non-essential parts. Do we know what these are? The parts of a flower, such as the stamen and the pistil, which are the reproductive parts, are the essential parts. Their function says it all. These are essential because they're directly involved in the process of reproduction. Do we mean that if these structures are not present, then a plant will not be able to reproduce? Yes, that's absolutely correct. So how will the plant be able to reproduce if the gamete producing structures are not present? And what are the other parts then? Floral parts such as the petals and sepals are the next in our list and they are the non-essential parts of a flower. These floral parts do not take part in the process of reproduction directly and are therefore called the non-essential parts. Now let's discuss each part in detail. To begin with, we have the stamen, which is the male part. What does the stamen look like? If we zoom in the structure, it looks like this. Stamen has two distinct parts, the anther and the filament. Do you think that these structures have specific functions to perform? Yes, as a matter of fact, they do. The part called the anther bears minute round bodies called pollen grains, which play an active role in reproduction. There is a specific process by which pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the female part of the same or different flower. Now, what is that part called? For that, we need to focus on to our next floral part, the pistil, which is the female part. The pistil has three distinct subparts. And what are these subparts? They are the stigma, style, and the ovary. Do these structures have specific functions? Yes, they do. The part called stigma is the landing place for the pollen. And what exactly do we mean by this? Pollen from the male part, the anther, land on the stigma and germinate further. 
This process is what we call pollination in plants. Next comes the style, which is a slender stalk that holds up the stigma in position and connects it with the ovary. What about the ovary then? It is the swollen basal part of the pistil which contains the ovules. But what are ovules and what is their function? Ovules are the female gametes that get fertilized and form the embryo. Is this process really so simple? Well, it's not as simple as it seems. The process is quite complicated. This was just an overview. Let us get into more details of the process of fertilization in the next video. All right. So you have just watched the structure of a flower and how do they look like and some of their functions. All right, moving on. This is how a plant grows. All right. So in the video, it was mentioned about the ovary, wherein the ovary, the seed grows inside of it. We call it the embryo. Okay. So if you put this embryo or seed in the soil, it would be look like this one. There is a growing process happening inside the soil until it becomes a grow plant. It start with the seed, wherein we call it hypocotyl, radical, seed coat. And then this one is the hypocotyl. And then this one, cotyledon. And then after that, it becomes cotyledon and then foliage leaves. And then after that, it goes like this. And then it will produce another flower, another seeds inside the ovary. All right. Let's see how a seed grows. Right. So you just have watched about how a seed grows inside the soil. Amazing, isn't it? All right. Moving on. It's activity time. All right. So this is an example of the structure of a flower or part of a flower. So draw the structure of a flower and then next is answer this following questions in the video. Parts of an insect pollinated flower. Okay, identify its part. And then on the next column is the function of the flower parts. All right, the same thing. Just do it on the paper or you can do a screenshot for this one and submit it 
in our group chat. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. Hope to see you again on our next video lesson.